5 p.m. Good evening, and welcome to St. Petronil. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Thomas Meloda, our pastor. Immediately following the introit, the processional hymn will be sung, which is in the worship hymnals at number 824, In Christ There Is No East or West, number 824. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. As we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we give thanks to God for all of his many blessings. And so let us take a moment now to prepare room in our hearts, calling to mind the times we have sinned, and asking the forgiveness of our loving Father in heaven. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, you came to call sinners, Christ Eleison. Christ Eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Amen. 
us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that, for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, say Koheleth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it. He must live properly. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days sorrow and grief in his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another. Since you have taken off the old self, with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed you as who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. We have the privilege of hearing from Father Gregory Schaefer, who is a missionary in Puerto Ordaz, Venezuela. He is not able to be here with us today, not out of want for doing so, but uh, he, if he were to leave Venezuela, the Venezuelan government would not let him back into the country. And so he has committed to, uh, so committed to care for his people that in fact, he has not been home for more than three years for that very reason. In fact, he was not even able to celebrate the funeral mass for his parents when they passed because he is so dedicated to his people. So without further ado, I'd like to share with you the words of Father Gregory Schaefer. Hello, my name is Father Gregory Schaefer. I'm a friend of Father Melodas, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity that Father Melora has given to me to speak with all of you from my parish of Jesus Christ Resucitado in San Felix, Venezuela. I wanna share with you a while back, I was sitting in the kitchen talking with a couple of the cooks and a couple of elderly women that came to visit to talk with the cooks. And while we were, while we were visiting, Father Phil came into the kitchen a bit out of joint. For the top button on his black clergy shirt fell off and he couldn't find it and he couldn't close it to put in his collar and he had a mask coming up with in one of the communities and he was just frustrated and Marta one of the elderly ladies just kind of seen the frustration on his face glanced at his shirt and without further ado snapped the top button off the sweater she was wearing and asked Phil to hand it over his shirt so she could sew it on him and solve the problem that was causing him so much anxiety. In today's readings, they remind us that the true goal of our lives here on earth is to one day live with God in heaven. He created each of us in his own image, rich and poor alike, out of love. He calls each of us, each in our own way, to love him back and to love our neighbor. God also calls us to be wise stewards of his creation. The things of this world, such as our material possessions, can cause us great anxiety at times. And it is prudent for us to remember that we cannot take any of our things with us when God calls us from this world. The first reading reminds us that all the material goods we have gained with our wisdom, knowledge, skill, and hard work, we will eventually leave behind for someone else to enjoy. Our material goods of this world are of no value to God. St. Paul makes it, makes it clear in today's second reading that we should live Christ-centered lives to seek the things that are above, the things that will last forever, such as our faith, 
that guides us to God, our hope in God's eternal love and mercy, and the love we receive from God that transforms us to love God back and to make sacrifices to love those around us. The more we practice the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, the more we attain the riches of God's grace and grow closer to him. That is the message of today's gospel. Whether we be rich or poor, God calls each of us to love him and to love our neighbor and to be wise stewards of his creation. Venezuela is a country very wealthy in natural resources. It is said to have the largest oil reserves in the world. Individuals are getting wealthy from the illicit mining of gold, coltan, and diamonds in the Orinoco mining in the Orinoco mining arc in my diocese of Ciudad Guayana. The vast majority of the people of my diocese are going hungry, just trying to survive day to day. There is high unemployment, rampant malnutrition, especially among the elderly and the children, and chronic violence, especially in the mining areas. As the people of the diocese are struggling just to survive, they have very little means to support their priests. In the agricultural communities, families share the harvest of their crops with their parish priest. In the city parishes, people do what they can to financially support their parishes. When the monthly Sunday collection is around $75, it is a struggle for the pastor to maintain the parish, to pay the secretary, and to have enough food for, and to have enough for food and medicine. Some priests of the diocese have taken on part-time jobs. Father Arturo Andrade builds custom win window frames that he sells. Father Cesar Coa spends his day off driving two and a half hours to the town of El Parmar, where he used to serve as pastor. It's a city or town a few hours out of the city. He goes there to buy cheese from a for former parishioner at a reduced price. Then Father Cesar, Cesar sells the cheese to restaurants back in the city just to make some extra money to live on. Many people of our diocese have immigrated to other countries, hoping to have a better future for their children and families. Some people have moved to the southern part of the diocese looking for work in the mines. As a result of the exodus of so many people, many elderly have been left behind by family members. Neighbors do what they can to help the elderly who have been abandoned. And the church also does what it can to respond to their spiritual, to their spiritual needs as well as to their physical needs. In the cities of Puerto Ordaz and San Felix, which are the center of my diocese of Ciudad Guayana, they have a population over a million people. Yet there is just one place that takes in the elderly who have been abandoned. It is a home run by the Sisters of Charity, Mother Teresa's sisters. They run a home just for men who have no one to care for them, and they take in primarily men with AIDS. And at this time, this home is currently filled. Some of the money that you give today will go towards a hospice that I'm building that will take in men and women who have been abandoned and will provide for them nutritious meals and medical care. The purpose of this hospice, which is called Mary's Home, is to provide care and support for those who have been abandoned. Mary's Home will allow them, those we take in, to live with dignity during the end of their time here on earth. The other part of the money gathered today will be given to the bishop who will distribute the money amongst the priests of the Diocese of Ciudad Guayana to help them to buy food, medicine, and personal care items. Your generosity will help them to continue to serve the needs of people who, like themselves, are struggling just to survive and to make ends meet. Venezuela is a country blessed with many natural resources. But because of corruption, greed, and poor stewardship, most Venezuelans are going hungry and find life very difficult. Yet many faithful do what they can to care for their local priests, provide food and medicine for their abandoned neighbor. The people of my parish give thanks to the Lord for the blessings they receive 
especially for the love they share in their families. For it is in that love that they share that helps them get through the most difficult of times. Last month, I buried a man called Senor Caito, an elderly man who died of COVID. None of his family members came to his funeral, but a lot of his neighbors were there as well as members of our St. Vincent de Paul Conference who would regularly visit Caito, praying the rosary and sharing prepared meals and medicine with him. Senor Caito was prepared to die and was excited to be reunited with his parents and to be with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Virgin and the Virgin del Valle, to whom, to whom he often prayed the rosary. A couple of weeks ago, family members of his showed up and sold the shack with a leaking ceiling and walls of corrugated steel that Senor Caito called a home. May he now rest in God's heavenly home for all eternity. At today's Mass, may your reception of the body and blood of Christ guide your hearts and minds to the higher things that will unite you with God, with the God who loves each of us. May your support of Father Melota strengthen and unite your parish community in good times and in the challenging times. Thank you for all your prayers and support of my mission, whether it be a button or a financial donation, whatever you can give is greatly appreciated. And may your generous stewardship of God's gifts here on earth be a help and blessing to many. May the Lord bless you and all your family and invite you to share in the joys of his love one day in his heavenly home. Father Meloda has provided envelopes at the ends of the pews for any do donations that you may like to make to help me and with the hospice and supporting the priests of the Diocese of Ciudad Guayana. Thank you for your prayers and support. May the Lord bless each of you. Uh, there are, as uh, Father Greg said, there are envelopes at the end of your pews. There will be a second collection today, so you can just put that uh, envelope in the second collection. Of course, we uh, appreciate any help that you can give. And one thing I can tell you is that whatever donation you make will go directly to those who need it most. Uh, Father Greg, uh, I've known him for 38 years, and uh, he's been down in Venezuela for uh, over 25 years now. I've been down to that mission, seen his work, and um, you know, he just, when he sees a problem, he just begins to solve it. And uh, he had one parishioner who died in his arms on the, on the steps of a hospital uh, near them. They wouldn't care for him, and so um, he decided, well, then I'm gonna build a clinic, and he did. And so as people are cared for then, he saw that the elderly and children were uh, not getting enough food. So he said, well, okay, we'll start a soup kitchen. So he did. Um, he uh, noticed that there was a, a problem, a lot of uh, the way that uh, people were having a hard time finding jobs. So he created a job training facility, created an orphanage to care, to, uh, care, for, uh, to, to care for the children. And uh, so he, he does what he says he's going to do. So it's not too often you, you get that kind of a, a testimony. We may wonder where we should give our money, but uh, obviously any generosity that you can provide will be a great help to him. And at one point, we, you know, we, right now we have a high inflation rate in our country, over 9%. And uh, at one point, the inflation rate in Venezuela was literally 1 million percent. Um, so imagine what that would do to you um, if you were suffering from an inflation rate of 1 million percent. So um, uh, thank you, uh, and uh, if you can, uh, please make a donation in the second collection. Let us stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God.
with faith and hope in the love of our Heavenly Father, return to him with these prayers and petitions. <clears throat> that the Church may ever more effectively proclaim to all people the true and lasting riches found in Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all who serve in and seek public office will commit themselves to securing fundamental human rights which are bestowed on mankind by God. By God. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That professionals in every walk of life will dedicate their skills to building a culture of life that protects every human being from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. For peace in troubled areas of the world, we pray to the Lord. That all who are ill may be healed as God wills, especially for Father John Palmer, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That all who have died may be welcomed to the banquet of eternal life, especially for Scott Holman and Margaret Mary Gibson. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intention of this Mass, Joseph de Nasso, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. There will be a second collection for the Venezuelan mission. Envelopes for contributions can be found at the ends of the pews. Our offertory hymn is in the Red Worship Hymnals at number 807, Lord, whose then shall they be? Number 807. Treasure. 
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Memorial Mass for Marie Mago will be on Saturday, August 6th at 9.30 a.m. here at St. Patronel. It's been brought to our attention that a number of parishioners are parking in areas in front of the church in northwest corner of Hillside and Glenwood that are not designated parking spaces, thereby creating a safety hazard for pedestrians and difficulty in emergency situations. 
in Christian charity and for everyone's safety, please be sure that you are parking only in designated parking spaces and leaving those areas open for emergencies. We thank you for your understanding and cooperation. And if it helps, on Friday we got a call from police, so. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is in the Red Worship Hymnals at number 787. The Spirit sends us forth to serve, number 787. Mm -hmm. 